going on guys? This is Chad from For the Fallen Dreams. I'm Mark. And you're watching Blend TV, Dangerous Music for Dangerous People. Hey Blend TV, we're here for uh, Fallen Fortress Open Air in Bad Durkheim in Germany and we're sitting down here for the Fallen Dreams. Thank you so you guys so much for joining us and sitting down and all that. Uh, you today you started off the day with playing at Hellmill Festival in Hell Germany Festival, yeah, yeah. and then you came here and played uh, this festival. Yeah, so what a, what a way to finish off summer tour. How do you guys feel about this summer 2019 and how was it for you? Uh, this, this whole run is, is, has been incredible man. Uh, European crowds have been extremely uh, receptive to all the new music we've been playing. Uh, the attendance and the crowds were extremely consistent and everybody had fun. And that was one thing I think we got to do the most is we got to really just have fun every night. Like it wasn't there was no there was no pressure to be like, oh no, how's the show gonna go? Uh, we knew that, you know, the crowds were gonna be there. We had great support bands with us and uh, we could just kinda just be ourselves and have fun and goof off and play some, some songs off a new record and have fun. That, that was the best part about the whole run. So. All right, all right. Um, and you guys are uh, going again on tour when you get back home, almost immediately, yeah. <laughs> with Of Mice and Man. Yeah. Um, and it's going to be US tour. So uh, what I want to ask, after the summer, did you guys feel any diff do you feel any difference between a European and American crowd? Some things that you do or like some things that adjust your set or your show or anything. How how do you sort of say mold to the crowd in those continents? Um, I think it's it, there's definitely a, a difference between the the two. I mean, obviously. If, uh, you know, we, we love fans. Anybody who gives us a chance to listen to the music is, is amazing in itself. So, um, Europe is, it was great because we've been away for so long and we haven't had a chance to show them any of the new music. While, you know, in the States we've, we've done a few tours with people who have gotten a taste for the new record. Um, with Europe, it was a five year absence on top of playing the new record, so it just made it a lot more special. So you can tell with a lot of the crowds, they were just really appreciative that we were there in the first place and that they could finally hear the new record. So, I mean, um, we didn't really adjust our set all that much. I don't think, I don't think we adjusted it at all. We, we just wanted to play the new record, give them a taste of some old stuff, you know, for the for the old school crowd. You, always, you know, you have those fans who have been around forever. Um, but we believe in the new record, we love it, and we wanted to be able to come over here and, and showcase it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, actually, I actually did see a couple of friends going on and then I said, that, but, oh, they actually did play some of the old stuff. Yeah. Mixed yeah, some of the new stuff. Yeah, man, you know, you know with the, the best thing about the new record and this tour uh, specifically is that um, there's been so many new fans. Like every night I ask uh, the crowd, like, Here's a new fan of For the Fallen Dreams. And more than half the crowd raised their hands. A lot of people have. I was one of them. Yeah, hey, hey, but yeah, that, he was one of them. But that's, that's what it's all about, man. But you know, to go back on Mark said to play songs, you know, from our older material. Uh, we've been around the band for in 2003. And we've yeah. been around for 16 yeah. years. And that's fucking crazy. So forever. <laughs> you gotta play some some old stuff because it's still. Um, uh, the Full of Fallen Dreams fan base is a dedicated fan base. And the yeah. amount of love we have for everybody that's stuck around with us for all, for all the years is, is just seriously unmatched, man. So to be able to play songs from a record that's 10 years old and people know it, and new people are listening to six, but then they're like, hey, holy shit, these guys got five other records before this. This is great. Yeah. It's, it's really cool, man. So um, to touch on that with you know, adjusting our set, really just you know mixed in a little bit of everything to make everybody happy and, and songs that make us uh have the most fun you know energetic ones so awesome awesome uh but so six came out 2018 right yeah. which was your sixth studio album and you had five other before and so what i would like to ask is how did these five previous albums the experience working on contribute and build it up to this album did you guys feel that you've been, so to say, 
you're making up for some of the stuff that you wanted to make up for in the previous albums and now doing something different or what's the thing? I, I personally think it's just evolved. It just, yeah. you know, it started as one thing and it just keeps growing and it keeps growing into, we don't, we don't know because we're not, yeah. we're not at the end yet. We've never been a band that was like, okay, we need to, we need to sound like this. We need to make sure our next record sounds like this. Like it's, it's just one of those things. It's no different than you know being an 18 year old kid and, and thinking that you know uh, spaghettios and beer is the best thing you've ever tasted. And then, you know, and then when you're in your 30, you're sitting down and having a nice steak dinner. So it's no different. You, as, as your your tastes evolve and you know you, you grow up, so does your music. And the best thing about you know, being around as long as we have is we've got to watch the evolution of us as human beings, as artists, as the band progress over a span of 10 years. And that's, uh, it's, it's really humbling sometimes to be able to go back and look at where you started um, and see the five records previous. And then here we are, you know, almost two decades later, we're in the middle of Germany playing in open air, partying and having fun and enjoying ourselves, yeah. all because of the music we wrote over a decade ago. So it's, it's very cool, man. It's very cool. How often do you guys listen to the old records? Um, I don't know if we listen, but we're kind of forced to listen to them sometimes. I listen to them because I have to practice them, you know, because you're like forced to listen to them. <laughs> What was that part? Oh, okay. Right. Sometimes you just go back like, what was the lyric of that again? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's cool, man. You know, like I said, it's, it's you see uh, where you came from and how the band's evolved. It's, it's just this being your own development. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cool. So out of six, uh, this is a question to you. Um, what's, what's this like one lyrical line that means the most to you and defines the album for you? Um, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of lyrics on, on the record that I, I think do a really good representation of what we lyrically try to pursue on this record and kind of touch on. I think um, in the undertow, you got to learn to walk on waters is a really good one just because it really captivates. You know, just you got to learn to sink or swim. Man. Like life's gonna happen whether you like it or not. You're gonna go through the ups and the downs, and I think it's. Uh, important to walk on water and make it work, man. It's just the way it goes. So. Do you know my favorite? It's the beginning of hypnosis. It's my favorite. Lost time is never found again. It's a good one. That's, that's, that's the one, man. That's the one. When I, every time I hear that, I'm like, oh, man. Damn. <laughs> hey. Yeah, that's awesome. Awesome. So, listen to those two. <laughs> Um, I saw you guys are posting a lot, sightseeing, going to visit the city and all that. Um, during the summer, have you guys made any like spot discovery that you've been so, you know, exact that face, that face? <laughs> Switzerland was really sick. Oh man, jumping off that. Yeah. We jumped off a bridge into the. Oh man, I don't know the name of the river. I I posted it. Like I, you know, I, I know what river it is. I just don't remember it. Uh, but no joke. Next to the venue, just this beautiful blue water and this bridge. And Chad's like, Hey, it's my birthday. We're jumping off of that. And we did it. Yeah. <laughs> the current was super fast. So as soon as you jumped in, you were like swept down the river real quick and you had to get to like a, there was a, a, like a steel ladder that was down into the water so as you were like flying down with the current you'd have to like swim over to the side make sure you grab the ladder before you get up oh yeah i remember covered. one point i didn't think i was gonna yeah. i didn't think i was gonna make it i mean there's another ladder down there but Still, I'm holding on to that Oh my gosh. Yeah, for sure. It was really cool, man. And, and um, Nick, uh, Nick Lowe, our photographer, uh, just just a maniac with the lens, man. Did you, did, you, did you catch that? We caught a lot of stuff like that, and that's, that's what's cool. There is right there. Hey, Nick. Oh. <laughs> We're talking about you right now. We're literally um, talking about you. He's, uh, he's just a phenom phenomenal photographer, so he... He is exactly that, a photographer. So he oh, sees shots that we wouldn't normally see. Your little spots off the highway, and he's like, that's it, guys, we're gonna go do this. So that's a cool thing about some of you guys and I for cool shots or, or cool locations is that he sees something outside of what we would just see as a, a quick road stop, and you know what I mean? He's like, no, that's that's the shot, let's, let's get that. So that was uh, really, really cool having him. I've known Nick um, 
been damn near close to a decade, so to have him out with us and help the creative stuff and get some really cool uh, shots was, was awesome. The last shot. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Um, so, the, the surprise question. That one. Um, surprise question. Um, okay, so, if not music, what kind of art would you be doing? What would you want to do? Do you mean, so you say art, but like a different career or a different profession? Like, or just what different art would we do if we couldn't play music? Exactly. What okay. Art what would, would we do? How would, you, how would we express ourselves? Exactly. 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 I would draw. I can't draw, but I would learn. I would learn. <laughs> I would learn. I would, learn. I would, learn. I would <laughs> nail that guy. Yeah, I, would, I would do it. I used to draw random stuff when I was a kid. And like, I was never that good, but you know, I would draw pictures of Michael Jordan dunking on a basketball hoop or Ninja Turtles or a Tasmanian Devil, you know, from Looney Tunes. You were into very weird stuff. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's some 90s American yeah. Yeah. World War right there. Yeah. Fucking, yeah. Yeah. Michael, uh, Michael Jordan. Looney Tunes, Tasmanian Devil. Tunes, yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, uh, Turtles. Yeah. I, turtles. I, I, yeah. Top stories of this Tasmanian Devil actually. That was that was pretty big as well. I was, I was a Marvel Martian guy. I could draw a Tasmanian Devil in less than two minutes. It's just a just like swirl, right? <laughs> well, no, I just know the, I just know the. Is that right now? Look, that's that's what I'm Air drawing. That's that's, that's the my air drawing. Right that's air it. drawing. Air drawing. So that's the best. you? Um. It's, it's, uh, I'd probably say drawing. I mean, it's, I guess that's kind of cliche, but I had the same thing as a kid. I really liked, uh, you know, art class and in sketching. school. Yeah, sketching, just drawing like my favorite uh, superheroes or whoever it was. Some teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle type shit. Classic. Yeah. yeah, some poetry, you know. Get down with some Death Jam poetry. Yeah, that's some, spoken, some spoken word, that could be fun. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, 2020. What are you guys planning? Anything? Anything you would like to tease or say or? Oh, well, I mean, since we're here, we're in Germany. We're already in talks of um, coming back in the spring and So we're already in the works of getting some festivals lined up, some more club dates. Um, some support tours, some headlining dates, there's a lot of stuff on the table, but um, Europe has treated us so well this time around, and I think us waiting the five years that we did, while it was, it was great for the band to come back, it was a nice resurgence of cool, they're back, cool, they're playing a new record, now that we've done that, um, it's, it's going to start becoming a, a more uh, uh, continuous thing, coming here more often, and really being able to appreciate all that uh, Europe and the UK and everywhere else with the band has given us on this one. So I think doing that, uh, getting things in order to go all the spring summer is where we're at at this point. So. Uh, and, uh, not, not much info on it, but new music is being worked on. I can say that. Yeah. Not much info. <laughs> But it's being worked on currently. So, okay. so yeah. 2020 is going to be super exciting for you guys. Yeah. Also for Europe because you'll be visiting more and everything. Oh, yeah. So, we're going to have some music. Um, we're good. Awesome. Awesome. Looking forward to it all. Uh, thank you very much for sitting down and talking about it. Thank you. Doing more Change Plank TV. See you next time.